I, I gotta say, one of the things that's the most annoying about society today, other than it seems like everybody's gotta have a label of some kind, everybody's gotta have an excuse or some type of thing holding them back at some point in time, like cry me a frickin' river, uh, is the piece about everybody's always gotta be right about everything. If you ask a question, people will jump down your throat because you're stupid, even though you're the one actually demonstrating intelligence by uh, trying to acknowledge the fact that you don't know everything and you're trying to gain knowledge and wisdom. Like We treat that as a bad thing. We treat education as a bad thing because we're human beings and we are fucking stupid, specifically Americans especially. And I bring that up to say like, it's either this way or it's that way and there's no in between. And there's also this big piece of, you see it in politics, you see it in other things though, about once somebody does something that's bad or that they don't agree with, that they can never change perspectives or opinions. You know, they might have said something when they were 20 years old, but now 40, by God, they lived a whole extra 20 years. They're going to be the exact same person believing and saying the exact same things, doing the same exact same things, which we know is fucking ridiculous. We know it. Like imagine how much you think about you change as a person in three or five years, let alone 10 or especially 20. And it's important sometimes to acknowledge that you may have been wrong in the past. It is important to acknowledge that the way you might have once felt about something is not always accurate. The way you might have felt about something could be wrong, could be hurtful, could just be you getting too caught up in your own personal biases and beliefs to the point where you're not able to see the bigger picture. As we sit here today, on the 20th anniversary of WrestleMania 17, you know, I wonder, have I been wrong about this show all these years? Legitimately. Like, have really given this some thought, seriously. Because those of you that know me, watch me for years, Know that in the past that I've ranted and raved about WrestleMania 17 and said things like it was an overrated piece of shit and is a typical Meltzer Magoo shit. Dave Meltzer said it was great. Alvarez said it was great. So all of the neckbeards and nerds that follow him thought it was great. Da 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 da. Like things I've said in the past. But as I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? Let me go back. And watch WrestleMania 17 again. Is 20 years ago. Like times change. Perspectives change. And as part of like a personal growth journey. Trying to be comfortable with the fact that. What I might what maybe once believed. Or thought was true. Or thought was real or right. May not have been. Or may no longer be the case. Because I got to tell you. As I go through. WrestleMania 17 and rewatched the show again and I just kind of think of it like there were a lot of really good matches on this card and beyond just that how many of these matches had well developed and interesting stories talking about the build up to WrestleMania 17 how many of these matches featured larger than life interesting wrestlers characters performers that we just flat out do not get in today's wrestling business. Like if you transposed WrestleMania 17 to today's wrestling, this show would so significantly kick the ass of any WWE, AEW, or New Japan circle jerk, it doesn't matter. Because it would be so striking how well the stories were built up and developed going into this show. How interesting and compelling the characters and performers were in the lead up to the show. How much better the freaking storytelling is even within the matches was for this show 20 years ago. How much better the commentary was, by God. Like you could go on and on and on. The pure star power and everything else. Like if WrestleMania 17 happened in 2021... Like, people would rage about it being the greatest show of all time. You think people rage about it from 20 years ago. 
Think about what they would do now. You take that show and transpose it in time to now, give me a break. But you look at it like you were kicking it off with Chris Jericho versus Re William Regal for the Intercontinental Championship. Like you had that funny ass hardcore championship triple threat with Kane and Raven and Big Show. And you say, well, you know, what was so great about that? You know, but it was again, it was a reminder of the characters that they had and the crazy off the wall things that they would do, the golf cart spot they tried and all this other stuff. Like, you know, it was different and it was something different on the show. Um, you know, you got to see Eddie Guerrero take on Test, who at that time, you know, you're assuming might be destined for bigger, better things in the future. Uh, Kurt Angle versus the Invisible Man, and I'll say his name this time, yes, Chris Benoit. Like, that's the type of match that you look at for WrestleMania that I've talked about for years that you've got to have. That intense, personal, mid-card rivalry. Where it's not about belts, it's not about you did this or you did that. It is about, I hate you because of this, or I'm better than you because of this, and by God, at WrestleMania, I'm going to fucking prove it. I mean, it was Angle and Benoit. You're talking about the type of mid-card WrestleMania match that you dream for every year. Two great technicians, and you're talking about two of the great in-ring performers in WWF slash E history. What the hell is there to hate about this? You know, even for me going back now, like, sure, the women's championship match, in theory, wasn't much because it was less than three minutes. But getting to see China as the ninth wonder of the world, shooting off the cannon and getting a trip down memory lane of just how big of a star China was in her time and how relevant she was and how much she moved the needle for both women in wrestling and for the WWF as a whole. You know, it, it's, it's an important reminder of that when you see her. The Shane McMahon-Vince McMahon match, like, granted... You know, it wasn't a technical work rate masterpiece, but it never is with those guys. They're going to do crazy, insane shit and somehow figure out a way to tell an interesting, compelling story. And that's exactly what the hell these two did. Like, even the whole plot twist with Linda McMahon coming to. Like, it worked. This is at a time where even the silly, crazy, stupid stuff, there were times they, they could make this work and this type of stuff worked. And I even even gotten to... The last few matches on the card, the legendary TLC match with E&C, the Dudleys and the Hardys that 20 years later we still remember, we still talk about. Like It wasn't a thing where you talk about that being the best or most memorable match on that show. You talk about it being one of the best and most memorable WrestleMania matches of all time, of all time. And it wasn't even a main event. It was a tag team match. Holy Christ. Like, and even when you talk about coming off of that, the flow and balance of the show and following that up with the gimmick battle royale, like, everybody loves nostalgia and likes to see these people from the past, and you had the freaking Iron Sheik win by eliminating Hillbilly Jim. The hell is there to gripe or bitch or beef about? You got to see Bobby the Brain Heenan and Mean Gene Okerlund? Like, there is absolutely nothing to complain about with that. It was the perfect comedy relief. It was something that split up the card towards the end of the show. It served its purpose. And then you got Undertaker versus Triple H in what was a really damn good match. Now, maybe some will look at it and say it was only the third ranked match out of their three WrestleMania matches, but it sure as hell was no slouch. And this is where you were really starting to get to the point where they were starting to kind of acknowledge that they had something with Undertaker in this streak and the fact that he had never lost at WrestleMania. Like, this is where it was really starting to come. And even when you talk about Human Taker, we know I don't like Human Taker. But just in terms of the show itself, it's Taker, it's God at Mania. Like, the match was really good. And then when you get to the main event, you're like, you want to talk about main events and matches that feel like main events. Even the build-up to this. You know, where Rock's talking about that he's going to bring his absolute best and Austin better bring his absolute best and Austin kind of teasing what could be happening by saying Rock doesn't know how much Austin needs to beat him. He needs to beat him more than anything else. Like you think about to this day, I see so many people hype up wrestling shows talking about main events and how this is huge. And this ain't shit by comparison. You're talking about two of the biggest stars, two of the biggest icons in WWF history, in the history of the wrestling business, at the peak of their fucking powers, are in the main event of WrestleMania at Reli the Reliant Astrodome in Houston, Texas. 
Like, we don't get this shit anymore. I don't care if they had faced off at WrestleMania two years before. It doesn't matter. We're still Austin and the fucking Rock for the WWF Championship. That's the peak, the epitome of the star power you want in a damn main event at WrestleMania in a damn world title match. And even, you know, I've based all these years about Austin in the heel turn. The reality is, is it was time for Austin to do something different. The reality is, why not try it? You were the only show left in town, so why not get adventurous? Nothing ventured, nothing gained, and if you continue to always do the same thing with Steve Austin, you could start potentially be talking about diminishing returns. So no, what better way to freshen up his character than to do something that people didn't see coming? So, you know, as I watch the show again, as I think about the show, and I think about my perspectives over the years, I realize I was wrong. I realize this is a great WrestleMania. I realize this is one of the greatest WrestleManias of all time. I realize why so many people now think of this as the greatest WrestleMania of all time. And I realize that the reason people think that is because they're marks and idiots. 20 years later, I still hate this show with every single fiber of my being, this overrated piece of crap. Oh, the matches were good. The matches were good. Oh, who gives a shit? Especially for these younger cats that don't even fucking know. Like if you're under the age of 25, shut the hell up. You do not have an opinion on this. Because you had zero skin in the game, you had zero emotional investment, and you have zero understanding at this point in time of what it makes interesting, compelling wrestling. Because by God, I see your taste on social media all the time. And it's no wonder the business is the goddamn shape it's in. Why do so many people, all these years later, still pump this show full of smoke? Are you that simple-minded where you can't think for yourself? Are you that naive and that dumb that you allow Meltzer Magoo and Alvarez Cuck to suck you in with this crap? Oh, this might be the greatest pay-per-view WWE ever did. Fuck them. This is garbage. Sure, they had good matches. But who gives a shit? Like, it's about more than that. And as time goes along, it's less about the matches. It's more about the moments. It's more about the impact. It's more about what it represents. And when I think about WrestleMania 17, it will always mean to me the representation of the deaths of WCW and ECW. That is absolutely nothing to fucking celebrate. Nothing. Nothing. And the whole thing about, ooh, Stone Cold Steve Austin turning heel was different. No, that was bullshit. Who the fuck wanted to see that? There was no call for that. There was no reason for that. Other than to sit there and say, well, we're the only show in town. We do whatever the fuck we want. So fuck you, fans. No, Vince, it's fuck you. You hurt the fans' feelings that day. And 20 years later, that's why you have a fraction of the domestic audience you did two decades ago. Like several of the matches on the undercard were overwhelming. Just because they had really good wrestlers or people that you really like in there doesn't mean that that shit was automatically great. The hardcore match was typical type of shit. was nothing special. Jericho Regal was nothing special. They had a fucking six-man tag match that lasted less than four minutes. We did the greatest wrestling of all time. Eddie Guerrero had to do his best to carry Test in that European Championship match. Okay, Angle versus Benoit was okay, it was good, but we certainly have seen both of them have better matches at fucking WrestleMania. So you look at the first half of that card, it's nothing. China's win was all about just seeing China, the match wasn't shit. It's a backloaded fucking card, and even when you look at the backloaded part of the card, it always seemed like at these big shows, those slimy little weasels that had Christian, I had to find a way to not do much of shit in the match, let the other two teams kill themselves, and then they fucking win. 
Yeah, it was so cool. Like, we think about some of these spots. The match was less than 20 minutes. I think it was like 16 minutes or 17 minutes or some shit. It is not the greatest ladder match any of you have seen in the past 20 years. It was good in its time, maybe. But then I can also point to fucking matches like this and say it represents so much of what's wrong with wrestling today because two decades ago, a bunch of little nerds that didn't have acting chops, that didn't have charisma, that didn't have great physical talents or great physiques, looked at it and said, you know what, I could crash test dummy and bumper car my way to a fucking big reaction from the crowd. Why learn how to be a performer, a character, a storyteller? I just don't be a dumb dick. See, the Young Bucks and so many of the other asshats that have followed in their lineage in the wrestling business. So fuck everybody that pumps this match up so full of smoke. It was good but not great and it represented shit. Undertaker and Triple H, yeah, even when you look back at it now, it's like, was that storyline really that hot? Maybe you think so? And fuck Human Taker! The hell wants to see this? And pre-reign of terror, Triple H? I'm good. And then the main event. Of course Steve Austin just had to fucking win at WrestleMania. That's why a couple years later, if I hear anybody ever say, well, at least Austin put over Rock in 2003, WrestleMania 19. When it was too fucking late, Junior, it didn't matter any goddamn more. It's like all these idiots that praise John Cena. For sitting there and saying, oh, you know, in the last few years of his career, he put a bunch of guys over when it didn't fucking matter anymore. The decade of doom had run its destruction through WWE. It was too fucking late by then. It didn't matter. Can't praise somebody for doing shit when it's too late. And here, Rock should have won. Rock was the bigger star. I know he was going away, and I understand all of that. But... You didn't need to do this with Austin. It was stupid. It sucked. And his whole heel run fucking sucked. And then beyond all that, whenever I think about this goddamn show, at the end of the day, what do I ultimately think about? Shane McMahon coming out. What's up, guys, to the WCW dudes? Like, that's all they fucking were. They were a cheap throw-in. 20 years ago, WrestleMania 17, to me, will always mark the end of WCW and ECW. The death of two companies that I grew up watching, that millions of other people grew up watching and enjoying and loved the product and loved what they did. Loved that time period. This represents the death RIP funeral of wrestling and its true greatness. And it also sparked and marked the beginning of what would come in that summer of 2001 in the pre-9-11 fucking days. The abortion that was the invasion angle. So 20 years later, I still think this show is overrated shit. Best mania of all time. Kiss my ass. That triple threat ladder match is the best ladder match of all time in WWE. Suck my cock. Flame away in the comments. I don't care. Imagine thinking after all this time that I was actually going to show personal growth and admit I was wrong on this. No. I was right 20 fucking years ago and I'm more right every day, every month, every fucking year that goes by. April Fool's, bitch. I'll never like WrestleMania 17. You can never make me like WrestleMania 17. Just like I can't make any of you realize that this show was an overrated piece of crap.